Today on Beers TV, we're going to release the test results from our chloramine carbon block testing, provide a few tips on how to test at home, and show you one simple modification which can almost double the lifespan of your carbon blocks forever. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we have episode two of our chloramine versus carbon block series. In the previous episode, we outlined the details of our testing strategy. This week we have the results. There are a few things you're going to see here right away that you may or may not have been aware of. First is no filter is 100% effective at removing chloramines for very long, which is a good reason to use two blocks in series. Second is flow rates, length of on-off cycles, and point at which you test are going to play a large role in how a filter performs and lasts. As a quick refresher, we did two tests, a faster apples to apples test, which one lasts the longest at three quarters of a gallon per minute, and a second test which simulates how an aquarium owner would use the filters. Our water here at BRS contains 3.5 parts per million chlorine, of which is mostly chloramines. We're going to call the failure point at 20% breakthrough, which is 0.7 parts per million of the chloramines passing through the filter. Let's start with a common 5 micron carbon block rated for 6,000 gallons with chlorine. You can see here it didn't even make it past the first testing point and was allowing over 50% of the chloramines through at just 40 gallons and became almost completely spent and pretty much worthless not long after that. The 0.6 micron standard carbon block rated for 20,000 gallons made it past the first testing point but failed at just 80 gallons and at 120 gallons it was already allowing over half or 50% of the chloramines through and rapidly got worse after that point. The loose catalytic carbon performed better and made it to the third testing point before it failed and the decline was much more gradual after that, making it the best performer so far. The BRS Universal Carbon Block, which is designed to treat for both chlorine and chloramines, expectedly had very different results. The filter lasted over four times as long as the best performing standard carbon block, and the performance lost after that was much more gradual, which really compounds the value, especially when using two carbon blocks, which we'll talk about later in this video. Before we get into what these results mean, let's review the second set of tests where we reduced the flow rate to around a quarter gallon a minute and we ran the system on 12 hour on off cycles. Running the system for 12 hours simulates producing 45 gallons of product water on a common 75 gallon per day RO system. And the slower flow rate is much closer to how an average reefer would use an RO system. Again, you can see the 5 micron carbon block failed at the very first testing point in a single day's use. The amount of chloramine making it through the filter also rose rapidly, even at slower flow rates. Ultimately, even though the filter is one of the most widely used and trusted filters for chlorine, it's of very little value treating for chloramines. The 0.6 micron carbon block also performed better and made it to day 4 before a failure point of 20% breakthrough, but quickly lost performance afterward. The refillable catalytic carbon cartridge performed almost identically to the 6 micron carbon block at these flow rates, which was somewhat unexpected, but probably related to channeling. The refillable catalytic carbon is commonly used to reduce the chloramines prior to the more costly specialized carbon blocks because it's considered less expensive and has a lower pressure drop. However, the specialized chloramine carbon block technology has advanced so much in the last few years, this filter arrangement isn't going to be used as commonly in the future. I don't think anyone will be surprised that the BRS Universal carbon block performed well and lasted 23 days of testing before it failed It made it far beyond 3,000 gallons. It's pretty obvious specially treated carbon blocks like the BRS Universal are the most effective solution for removing chloramines. However, they do cost more, so the real question in all this has never been are they more effective at removing chloramines because most of us were in agreement that they were. It's are they more cost effective and kinder to your reefing budget. In this case, the 5 micron filter seems to be of almost no value treating for chloramine, so we won't bother commenting on that one. The BRS Universal Carbon Block is a few bucks or about 30% more than the 0.6 micron standard block. However, the results here show the Universal to be at least 4 to 500% more effective, which makes the decision pretty simple. You're getting 4 to 5 times the effectiveness with just a small increase in cost. Hopefully this test will really put an end to the chloramine versus carbon block debate for good. To be honest, this is something that pretty much every municipal water related industry has understood for a long time, but for some reason wasn't well accepted in the aquarium industry. 
This is also something we really encourage you to test for yourself. One thing we've learned from all of our testing is the manufacturer's gallon ratings on the side of the filter are more or less just guidelines because the testing is rarely at the same flow rates as reefers use them. Everyone's water supply contains different levels and types of disinfectants at different pHs. Not to mention failure points and testing procedures are vastly different as well. There's also a gigantic difference in the way that each reefer uses an RO system, which makes a standardized recommendation impossible. Some of you produce 10 gallons a week, so the system's only on for three hours a week. Some of you 75 gallons a week, so it's on for 24 hour periods. And some of you have the system hooked up directly to the tank, so the system's on for short periods all day long, every day. Since carbon blocks effectively recharge their ability to treat for chloramines during downtime and their effectiveness is reduced the longer they're on, everyone's experiences are going to be drastically different. This is true for chlorine and chloramines, but because chloramines are so much more difficult to remove, the effect is going to be way more pronounced when filtering chloramines. It's also important to remember that the rating on the side of the filter is for water that passes through the carbon block, not water the RO system has produced. A typical RO system operates on a 3 to 1 to 5 to 1 waste to product water ratio, so 100 gallons of water from an RO system means the carbon block's actually filtered anywhere from 4 to 600 gallons to produce that 100 gallons of water for your tank. So our suggestion for you is to not rely very heavily on the water volumes listed on the packaging, such as six or 20,000 gallons, and start using some cheap, simple five-second test strips and replace the filters when you detect an unsatisfactory chloramine breakthrough and the blocks are no longer performing to your satisfaction. The easiest way for most people to test for this is to run your system for at least 10 minutes and then test the wastewater with a total chlorine test strip which will detect all of the chlorine and chloramines in your water. I say wastewater because this is water that's passed through the carbon blocks and while it does enter the membrane housing, the wastewater isn't filtered by the membrane itself, so this is a good place to test. If you want, you could also remove the tube from the last carbon block and collect there as well, but eventually you'll damage the tube over time from removing it and inserting it over and over, which can cause leaks. If you like to do that or your wastewater line is hard plumbed, it might be wise to throw a three-way valve on the line, which makes collecting a sample really easy. One last note on testing, you'll get vastly different test results from testing 10 minutes after starting the system versus testing after the system's been running for 10 hours. So you're going to have to decide where you want to test, the beginning, middle, or end of each use cycle. Keep in mind that the RO membrane and DI resin will likely catch most of what the carbon block misses, so your tank is probably safe. However, the chloramines will oxidize the surface of the RO membrane, which will shorten its lifespan and reduce its performance. Depleted carbon blocks will also allow other harder to test for contaminants through as well. Our testing also shows that a very large portion of the chloramines pass through the membrane but is removed by the DI resin. This of course depletes the DI resin much faster which can be expensive. We believe it's just better to keep each stage working optimally so they're all performing their unique jobs effectively. But if a small amount of chloramines is making it through the carbon blocks, the membrane and the DI resin are very likely going to catch it and produce water safe for your tank. All of these considerations make it difficult to make an exact one-size-fits-all recommendation for when to test and change your filters, but at bare minimum I would check them once a month with a test strip like this one 10 minutes after starting the system and replace them when I saw 0.5 parts per million or more total chlorine making it through. A more relaxed reefer might let it get higher if they know their membrane and DI resin are operating at maximum capacity. The most diligent reefer would probably change them at 0.25 and use something more accurate like a HANA checker. Okay, so how about a couple ways to maximize the lifespan of your filters and save some money? First way is to use two carbon blocks where the first carbon block is doing a large portion of the work and the second is just providing the final polish. The benefit here is while I might replace a single carbon block after 10 or 20 percent of the chloramines breaking through, with two I can leave the first one in possibly all the way to 30, 40 or even 50 percent breakthrough, knowing the second filter will get the rest and last a lot longer because it's handling a reduced load which maximizes the usable life of both filters and saves money. Most people will likely replace both filters at once at that point, but if you really want to maximize your dollar, you could consider moving the second filter to the first spot and putting a new filter in the second carbon block canister. This will increase the frequency you need to test and change filters, but maximize the usable life of the filters overall and save some cash. 
If your RODI system only has room for one carbon block, upgrading is easy as adding a single canister before your system, putting the sediment filter in that canister, and using the two canisters on the RODI system for dual carbon blocks. There's one upgrade to your system which almost doubles the effective lifespan of your carbon blocks, which is adding a 150 gallon per day water saver upgrade to your system. This upgrade adds a second membrane, which almost doubles the amount of product water produced, which effectively cuts the waste to product water ratio in half. Net effect is your carbon blocks and sediment filters will last almost twice as long. This upgrade not only produces water twice as fast as a 75 gallon per day system, but will likely pay for itself in months by effectively doubling the usable life of your sediment filters and carbon blocks, not to mention reducing your water bill and waste. One last tip, if you have a commercial operation where you produce a lot of water from a water supply treated with chloramines, I would highly recommend using a larger industrial big blue 20 inch filter, which will save you a lot of money and time over the long run. If you have any advice or question for your fellow reefers, check out the comments area down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we release two new reefing videos every week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.